you can create reusable and rule-based data transformations as a part of your data pipeline. You can perform both global and explicit transformations. Global transformations are created by a rule that uses percent as a wildcard in the scope to apply to all matching datasets. In transformation type, you can perform the following transformations. Rename datasets. Rename columns. Add columns. Drop columns. Convert data types. And replace column value. In transformation scope, you can define a source data asset name pattern and source dataset. In transformation action, you can rename the dataset to a fixed name. Add, remove, or replace prefix or suffix. Change case to lowercase or uppercase. Rename dataset names using an expression. You can build your expressions using functions, operators, and metadata. And finally, rename dataset names using a dictionary. This is useful when you are working with a large number of objects that use cryptic naming conventions. You can add translations in a dictionary editor or import a CSV file containing the translations. You can also export the dictionary to a CSV file and reuse it in another data asset. In this case, we select the option to change the dataset case to lowercase. In general, you can add a name and a description for the rule and click Finish. You can add more than one rule, and you can enable or disable each rule. There is real-time feedback in the user interface, with the change being applied immediately. You can see that there is a notation next to the attribute. You can add a column by clicking on the Add Column button. You will need to provide a name for the column. You can also set the column to be a primary key and if it will be nullable. In Data Type, you can set the data type of the column. For some data types, you can apply additional settings. For example, length or precision. The column that you've added has an annotation, showing that it is an explicit transformation rule. Once the column has been added, you can open the Expression Builder to define the expression. You can use columns in the dataset, functions, and operators to build the expression. You can also use all functions supported by the Cloud Data Platform in the expression. You can change settings for the dataset, rename the dataset, and check the generated SQL. You can validate all datasets that are included in the data asset. Validation includes checking that all tables have a primary key, there are no missing attributes, and that there are no duplicate tables or column names. In this case, we have an error because the column we have added is defined as not nullable while the value is null. Fix the validation errors and then validate the datasets again. In this case, we check the nullable option. Now, we validate the datasets and we see that we have no errors. You will also get a list of design changes describing the changes that were applied to the source. You can sync datasets with design changes that cannot be adjusted automatically. This requires stopping the storage task. When the datasets are synced, validate the datasets before restarting the task. When syncing the datasets fails to adjust design changes, you can recreate the datasets from the source. Once you have made all your transformation, you can run the data asset. The data asset will now start creating datasets to transform the data. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.